Hey, thanks for stopping back into Two Star Garage. Today we've got a bunch of air compressors that are failed. We've got this Campbell household. It's 125 PSI max, five horsepower peak. We're missing the pulley for the pump. It's right there. This pulley for the motor. You can see it's a little wonky. We've got a cover that was found, thankfully. Part sitting there. We got the belt right here. We got the Husky 175 that failed. And all the way across the shop over these three wheeler parts, we've got the Craftsman that we're working on, saving from scrap. Other than that, there's only one thing left to do. Let's get this one back up and running. Five horsepower peak, 125 maximum PSI. Satisfaction guaranteed. Do not return to store. All right, we won't do that. Campbell household, extreme duty, built to last. This one came with a limited warranty, three years. Not the most powerful air compressor, but a very good one still yet. 6.6 .6 at 40 PSI, 5.8 at 90 PSI. Does what it needs to do. Checking out the motor we got on it. It's a three horsepower. 115 volts and I believe this is a single phase. Can I see that right here? It's a single phase. Let's go ahead and take our belt off I guess we do the pulley first We're gonna grab our belt The owner was able to find the cover for the pressure switch, so that's good It's not broken Moose. Hey, buddy. Got a single gauge up here. Switch appears to be in good shape. Nothing's broken on it, so we're going to leave that. We're just going to put the cover back on. As the story goes, this fell off of a tractor loader, and after it fell off, the Pulley was wiggling around as it was spinning. And then if I can show you this. I don't know if it's easy to catch on that, but it's definitely got some balance issues there. This one does have the air filter. It has about 30 pounds of air pressure in it. We're gonna go ahead and take this piece off. We'll put it back on, but I wanna put some gauges and a pressure regulator right here. 19 mil. Now it's just turning just fine. Good, we're gonna clean up these threads. So I'm gonna end up taking this apart pretty much all the way. We'll go put this on the workbench. Okay, so now that we got the three valve adapter off, we gotta clean these threads. You can see that this has been rounded. We're not gonna touch that. But we are gonna get these threads cleaned off. We don't wanna have any leaks in this bad boy when we're done. There we go, that's looking a lot better than what it was. It's nice and clean so we can put thread tape around there and seal it up. So here's what we got. Got the valve that we took off. We're gonna clean this up. We got this coupler sitting around. I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the wire wheel and clean off this pre-purchased uh, thread seal. And we've got our field pressure regulator. Got a couple gauges. They're used, but they're good. We're going to clean those up as well. Be right back. No more red sealant. The reds are cleaned up. That's what we want. In case you're wondering where this came from. It came from the Husky that broke twice. The second time it was the brush motor that broke. So that's going to be an expansion tank for this Craftsman that we're trying to save from scrap. Some thread seal tape sitting around. Let's go ahead and wrap up this coupler. When you do this, you always want to take into account which way you're going to screw it to tighten it. So you're going to go right 
or clockwise. So with this, we want to put it on so we don't undo it, but we tighten it as we screw it on. Cord is kind of in the way. As usual, it's no big deal. Just got to get it started. And then from there, you'll be good. That's going to be all it takes right there. Wrap this around. All right, so as we tighten it, it's just going to, it's not going to try to unravel anything. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure we push this outside so it's not over the, the, uh, the opening. So there you go, you can see. All right, so I can tell we're not going to be able to really turn this. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to adjust this over. That should give us enough room to turn it around. Okay, and one thing to note right here, you're going to have another port. We're going to actually take a coupler that just plugs it. Or a plug, I suppose is what you can call it. Let's move this. Hey, Mooster, what's up, buddy? We're already running into an issue. Let's keep going. And we're gonna hit. So let's see how we're gonna do this here. All right, by turning this all the way closed, a little more space we can hopefully get this the rest of the way doesn't need to go too many turns it's going to be okay as long as it seals up that's what we want and that's where we're going to stop right there it should be just fine we're going to go one more why not let's just do it it's turning okay it's not too tight i want to make sure i don't have to take this apart once we're done This thing to swing around here. There we go. Now we're going to swing this back. Careful so we don't pinch anything. There we go. Cord. We are going to go right there. Bring the cord right down in front of this nut. Okay, so our gauges are going to go right here. We're going to put those on, but first we're going to put this cover on. Sometimes you gotta just turn this a little bit to get it seated. That one's just gonna go right on for us. That's nice, let's get a Phillips screwdriver. This doesn't need to be on tight, so a little standard little Phillips screwdriver will do. It does have a little clip right here in the front that we wanna be aware of, so let's get that on there. Over, somehow. Let's see if we can hear a click here. That's what we want. Switch is working. Let's back this out and tighten it up. Butterfingers. The thing that I'm concerned about is if we're gonna have a leak right down here. We're not gonna have a leak right here. We're not gonna have a leak on the gauges on this side, on the pressure regulator either. But down below, because I've been turning this back and forth, I don't want to have a leak down there, but I think we're going to be okay, so we're going to find out at the end when we pump this up. We've got our pressure release right here. I'm going to leave that in place. This is set to off. This is set to on. We're going to clean everything up at the end, make it look nice and pretty again. Let's go ahead and get our gauges on this regulator. Two gauges, both PSI, both go up to 300 PSI. No need to worry about which side they're going on. Little trick is you tighten them up till they're just getting some pressure on them. You can see they're both upside down, that's no good. But, uh, what am I doing? Let's back this off, let's put some silk thread on these. Almost made a boo-boo. Don't wanna do that. Okay, this is it. I'm gonna put some thread seal on and be right back. All right, here's our first gauge with the thread seal. We're gonna put it on until it starts snugging up.
There we go, it started snugging up. Let's take our second one, get some thread seal on this. All right, here's number two. We've got the thread seal on. We've got it out from the edges. Let's put this one on until it starts to snug up, just like the last one. There we go. All right, they're both upside down again. We're gonna give them another turn. Give this one another turn. We got them both upright, but I think we got a good turn left in them so we can make sure they're sealed up. If they get too tight, you just wanna grab your wrench and start turning. And this one's gonna go. There we go. This one, I'm gonna grab the wrench and give it a turn on the back side so we don't break the gauge. All right, this is gonna be, I think this is gonna be a 12 actually. We got a 13 here, this will work, it won't round it off. Don't have to make them super tight. We're gonna go right there. So they're both on straight. If you need a gauge, if you're rebuilding your compressor, you can get these from Harbor Freight. They're about $5, $5.99. They don't have to be super expensive to work. You can use your judgment on if something looks cheap or feels cheap. These came off the old Husky that failed. This is full PSI coming out. As you back it off here, it reduces the PSI. This has got a lot of gunk on it. We're gonna take this over to the wire wheel, clean this off. Okay, it's nice and cleaned off, didn't take much. I'm kind of trying to decide on what I want to do here. Do I want to put a coupler right here and then put this over here? Or do we just, we can't do this obviously because this would be full PSI. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this. We're not even gonna use this. We're just gonna take this adapter with the three couplers or easy connect, disconnect. We're gonna put it right over here. Here's the coupler you're gonna use. I got these from a store called Runnings and you can get them from most places. Uh, Harbor Freight doesn't have these, I don't believe. I could be wrong. So this has been used, it's still good of course. I'm gonna clean up both sides of it and we're gonna connect it right up. So when I come back, this will be cleaned up. It'll also be attached to our adapter here. When I do this, the thread seal I have is pretty thick. So don't be afraid if you do a sloppy job like that. It's actually not sloppy, you're covering it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these two parts off and it'll be ready to put onto the adapter as well as onto our ear pressure regulator. Just like that, there we go. We're gonna use a 14. Let's go the right way, how about? And there we go. You don't have to make it super duper tight. Should be good, nice and snug. Here comes our adapter. I am actually gonna be able to tighten these up just by hand, but I'm gonna grab a wrench and just give it a half turn. It's gonna be a 19. It starts tugging on that, we don't need that to happen, so. There we go, that's snug. We're good with leaving that right there just like that. Pressure switch, pressure release, gauges, regulator, quick connect, disconnects. We're gonna swing us around to the other side now. We're gonna take a look at the pump and the motor. One thing just to point out before we go to the other side and work on the pump and motor, I did put the plug in right here and uh, it's just a hex. It's all in, ready to go, so we're all sealed up. Well, here we go. This is just an adapter piece. Got our pump pulley. Got our belt, got this old gauge. We're gonna save this gauge. We're gonna give it back to the owner actually. And if they use it, great. If not, oh well. I'm gonna take this, just connect it up to this side. Oh, it goes right here, okay. Give me faith like that. Okay, we wanna get this lined up so we can put the key in. Just want to line it up and then push it in and get it to go. Oh, there we go. There we are. I'm gonna grab a little block of wood. All right, I grabbed a different key and it's a little longer. It's gonna be just fine. 
Actually, I've got this pulley on backwards. You want to pay attention to your hole over here. This is going to want to be on the outside as you tighten it up. There's that. Here's our new key. Wobbling back and forth. That's not what we want. So there's an issue there. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the belt on and I'm going to attempt to fire this up. And we are going to see if the shaft is crooked or if the pulley is crooked. So we'll pay close attention to that. You tell me what you think. I'll give you a nice up close view here. We might need to buy a different pump if this shaft is crooked. It's gonna be a little loud, so I'll modify the sound down. going to cap that off with the rubber cap, hose clamp it down. Everything looking good except for this pulley. I am not impressed and I'm having a hard time telling if it is the shaft or if it's the pulley. So I think what I'm going to try to do is find another pulley to put on this. We're going to test that out and see how that is. There's just too much wobble in there. This one isn't even so bad. I'm gonna look at replacing this to get a few more RPMs out of this thing. I could live with that one right there, but this one is just tough. I don't want to replace it. So I'm gonna have to take a trip into town, I think, but we're just gonna have to do that, so. All right, while we're up here, since we remember that we gotta plug this, we're gonna take our plug, pick this up at running. Excuse me, got the hiccups very cheap. Go ahead and start it off. It's got its own thread sealing on it. Thread it right in. Pushes in, pulls out. And believe it or not, it's right here. That's right at the max. So we're good. Let's keep it running. Okay, that's what we want. Went up to 149, which I believe is good because I think the cutout, the release switch for the pressure goes at 150. So if that's getting weak, we'll find out here because it'll kick off and Give us heart attack. Pressure regulator is working. We're at zero. Open it up. There's about 50. Open it up. Right there is going to be about 90. And of course, we can go all the way. Awesome. So that's what we want. Well, I think that's going to about do it for today. Moose is mad. He's been in the house for most of the time here. Put the cover back on the switch, the gauges, we put them on, we put the regulator on, this adapter's back on for the owner as well as the attachment. We did put the pulley back on, it's a little wobbly, the owner's going to use it as is, and if the pump starts leaking out the shaft at any point in time, or he decides to replace that pulley, then we'll do that. We might just replace the whole pump all at one time in the future. But for now, took this compressor that was down on its luck, 
out of service and it's going to be back in service for the owner and we'll call that a win. Thanks for hanging out today. Hit that subscribe button. Check us out on Instagram. We share quite a bit on there. We'll catch you guys next time.